So as usual, let's wait until four past or so before we start. Okay, being four past now, I think we can start. So welcome everyone to this um, interim meeting of the co-working group, uh, the first of this new year. I'm Marco Tiloka, Michael Cesar, Karsten Borman, and Jaime Jimenez. And this is an official ITF meeting, so as usual, the not well uh, applies. It's not just about IPRs, but uh, most and especially about code of conduct. So please be nice and professional um, with each other. Uh, before getting into the main uh, topic for today, just an announcement that uh, less than 30 minutes ago, I think, um, the ASG approved uh, the publication of the Yang Seed uh, document. You can see the pre-announcement of the mailing, on the mailing list. So uh, we look forward for the uh, final announcement. And uh, congratulations to the authors and the working group for this. It was a very big achievement. Thanks, Karsten, especially. <laughs> Okay, um, do, you, do you want to say something, Karsten, by the way? 
Yeah, this probably was the most difficult RFC to get through the final stages. Um, the, the work started like 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, uh, and uh, Peter van der Stoek was one of the people who was pushing this uh, forward and took us a long time to understand what we really wanted to do. Uh, and then it took us a much longer time to actually uh, get this uh, understood by, by a lot of people who needed to understand this to make this happen. So thank you for, for everybody who helped uh, doing this. And uh, of course, uh, thank you to the people who are retired uh, now who, who worked on this. Um, yeah, so I think we now have an efficient way to, to give numbers to um, items that occur in, in a schema like a Yang schema and that will allow us to have very compact, very concise and, and very efficient uh, management communication and, and other kinds of communication. So, uh, of course, I started work on a new draft in this space this morning. If you are on the CBOR mailing list, you may have seen that, that I uh, uh, accidentally leaked uh, where, where that work is uh, happening. So the, the work is not done, but I think we reached a significant milestone. Thank you uh, for the summer and all the work on this again. <laughs> Okay, um, after that, uh, we have one uh, main item in the agenda for today. Um, it was a proposal from Christian that came around uh, a bit after the uh, ITF meeting in Prague uh, last year. Um, it was uh, mostly about the uh, OSCOR key update or KUDOS document in core, but um, closely related and mostly in the interest uh, I understood of yet another document um, in core, um, the proposed cacheable score. And yet the authors of uh, Kudos, meaning Richard and I, thought uh, deeply about that, and, and we could come up um, uh, with our thoughts for today to, to discuss more about that proposal and understand it better. Um, but we have plenty of time for today. Uh, if this is the only the, item, the only item to discuss, I think we'll save quite a lot of time. So is there any other item for the agenda today or any agenda bashing more in general? If none, let's focus on this then. And Richard, the stage is yours if you want to share the slides yourself. Yeah, definitely. Let me ask to share slides. So I should have asked now. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, like Marco mentioned, he gave a short introduction there. This presentation is about kudos, but the focus is mainly this proposal from Christian that also affects um, uh, cashable loss score or was in the benefit of cashable loss score. And just to recap the current state of the kudos draft, um, it's, it was composed of three parts. Uh, part number one about the actual core kudos procedure, which is for renewing your master secret and master salt and thus deriving new sender and recipient keys. And it has some nice properties, including no change to the ID context and the ability to preserve forward secrecy. Uh, or, yeah. And um, it's also agnostic to the key establishment method originally used. So maybe you establish your context with ad hoc or uh, pre-shared or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can still run kudos to update your key material. Uh, the second part of the draft used to be about the key usage limits, meaning specific limits on how many times you can use your keys uh, for protection in OSCORE. This was split out into a separate draft as of March uh, 2023. And then point number three, which is still in the current kudos draft, that is about the procedure for updating the OS core sender and recipient IDs, which may be uh, desired uh, in the sake of uh, increased privacy. And as we discussed during the ITF 118 session, uh, this will also be split, in, uh, split out into a separate draft. Um, and thus only point one will remain. So kudos draft will really focus on kudos 
and these other two parts will have uh, drafts of their own. So things become a bit more focused and the kudos draft itself becomes a decent amount shorter also. And also just to recap the procedure overall, the kudos procedure itself, it's about exchanging nonces between the two pairs, between the client and the server. Um, in this figure, we have the client as initiator, but you can also have the client as the responder. So you have both the forward and reverse message flow, uh, similar to, um, to ad hoc. Um, you exchange the nonces in a field in the Oscar Coop option, specifically the nonce field. Uh, we have a specific function that takes these nonces and also X bytes uh, and the X byte code specific flags and also uh, the length of the nonce. And all this information is used to derive a new master secret. Um, and uh, after that, you get new sender and recipient keys on both pairs. And then to go into this proposal from Christian, which we try to summarize here in the slide. So basically, um, it was mainly presented in these two issues, one in the OSCORE key update repo and one in the cacheable OSCORE repo. And overall, the idea was about um, benefiting uh, the cacheable OSCORE document. So currently in cacheable OSCORE, the, things, the way things work is that uh, a request hash value is computed over a plain co-op request. And then this request will be created uh, into the OSCOR protected deterministic request. And the request hash value is transported in a dedicated request hash option placed in the deterministic request. Um, and then the question can become, uh, yeah, I see Christian's already in there. Please feel free to jump in when, whenever you have something else. I can't hear you if you're speaking. Yes, I'm here in the audio from Christian. Yeah, maybe some technical difficulties. Yeah, before the meetings, I, I could hear some soft noise from Christian's side, but never his voice. No, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't, I don't recall hearing his voice during the meeting, that's true. Can you try to rejoin, Christian? Looks like you can hear us at least. Maybe not even that. Yeah, let's give him some time to, to try to fix things, but just to to um, to clarify, this is our uh, perception or our summary of the of that idea presented. Um, I guess yeah, Christian, you can write in the chat. It seems uh, sure that would work. Yeah, definitely. one one more thing to try. Ah, yes, it works there. now. Ah, yeah. Don't okay. don't fix it. Um, okay, so, uh, sorry. <laughs> So the thing, the thing that why, why I wanted to jump in briefly was to give a yeah. bit of context of of that that is probably missing here. That is, um, the original idea when sketching up cacheable OSCOR was to um, just pick the OSCOR nonce of the hash. So so use the hash as the OSCOR nonce, mm -hmm. um, or kind of put that into the sequence number field. But that thing is just too short to. Um, to be sure that the um, the random output of the of the hash function uh, will give us enough entropy to not to not do any key reuse, so I needed to have to add another way through this um, add extra option um, to to add in something into into a nonce ish field, and that's why I was coming to um, to kudos because here I said, hey, we have a new way of inputting nonces, and all of a sudden this nonce input is not limited to the length of the um, AEADs nonce minus our our identifiers and all of a sudden this becomes viable so this is um this is the context where this is where this is coming from 
Right. So thanks for the context. Uh, so so um, I understand a bit better than like you were saying, you already were thinking about the, the KID um, field, right? But sure, then basically as we summarize your proposal here is that what this would be about is enabling longer nonsense than 16 bytes and kudos. Um, and one aspect was that this can be done, the nonsense can be transferred in the nonce field of the OSCOR option, or alternatively in the core payload uh, prepended to the OSCOR ciphertext, which has some benefits because you can take advantage of fragmentation with blockwise. And then, like you said, this would also then enable actually transporting the request hash value in this nonce field. Um, and where you can have a nonce then that would be well more than 32 bytes. So to continue on this, uh, we were discussing and we had three kind of points to consider based on this idea. Uh, the first point being, how do you encode now the size of this larger nonce? Um, the second point was the positioning. So should it be, what if you have it in the core payload versus having it in the nonce field of the OSCOR option and analyzing both these two uh, ideas? And thirdly, how does this overall fit with uh, kudos and cacheable OSCOR? So as far as the encoding of the nonce size, um, you can see here the first part is the current way the nonce size is encoded, which is in a quite simple manner. Basically, the nonce size can be between 1 and 16 bytes. And we encode in this M subfield of the X byte um, the size minus 1. Uh, and then immediately after following the X byte, we have the nonce value itself. So in this example, you can see that the M subfield is 7, meaning that the nonce length is, in fact, 8 bytes. And as a proposed new encoding, which will allow for nonce sizes of from 1 to 65,805 bytes, um, it, um, we decided on an idea that is quite similar to how the co-op option number delta is encoded. So we have the X field, and the 4-bit subfield M can then take uh, one of three cases, basically. Case number one is, uh, like today, it's between 0 and 12, uh, and it's to be interpreted as the size minus 1. Alternatively, the value could be 13, which signals that a 1-byte XM field follows um, that holds the size minus 13 minus 1. And option number three is that the M field has the value 14, which is to signal that there's actually two, a 2-byte two XM field following that has a 16-byte integer uh, including the size minus 261 minus 1, uh, 269 minus 1. And in the example, you can see that we have M is equaling 13, meaning that it's signaling the presence of XM one byte. And that one has uh, value 18. And if you take 18 plus 13 plus 1, you get 32. And thus, the nonce field takes length 32, which is also yeah, we chose this example because 32 would be the size of the uh, request hash value in cacheable score. And uh, so overall, I mean, in terms of encoding the size, it's very much doable and it would work to enable um, yeah, very large nonsense. Um, so that should not be a, an issue and, and the encoding could be solved um, in this manner. And then we come to the question of the actual positioning of the nonce. So we had some discussions on this. And well, the question is, where do you place now this nonce or the hash value if we're talking about cacheable loss score? So we consider these two options. Option number one is to place it in the OSCOR option, which is where it's already in kudos. Uh, alternatively, you can put it in the core payload uh, prepended to the OSCOR ciphertext. As for kudos, uh, we refer to this value V, which is the kudos nonce. So 
we consider this requirement that V must be integrity protected both in the request and response, uh, which in which it indeed is because V is taken as input to the key derivation in kudos. So you take the actual nonce values as input to the key derivation. And as a conclusion, uh, placing the kudos nonce in the OSCOR option or in the core payload uh, would both work fine because the uh, integrity protection comes from the fact that it's used in the, in the key derivation. Um, as for cacheable OSCOR, in this case, V would be the request hash value. So in the, a deterministic request, uh, V takes place, takes part in the key derivation, uh, and thus it's integrity protected, and its position would be irrelevant, meaning you could place it either in the co-op option, uh, sorry, either in the OSCOR option or the co-op payload. Um, as far as the response to the deterministic request, we conclude now, it um, if it's um, yeah if it's about the response to the deterministic request, um, we concluded that if you place it in the OSCOR option, uh, well it will be integrity protected because the external AD uh, includes the OSCOR option um, and would thus um, provide integrity protection. This is because it's being protected with um, with group OSCOR actually in this case in the cacheable OSCOR case. Now. If you place the request hash value in the core payload, um, there's not really any mechanism then for integrity protecting it um, since it won't take part in the, well, it, it's not part of the external ID, it's just uh, loose there in the core payload, let's say. Hey, Christian? Um, to be fair, I haven't mm -hmm. spent uh, much time thinking yet about how this would be used on the response side. Um, but I don't think that at least the request hash value would be transported in response in the first place because the, um, the uh, responder can be reasonably sure that the request can, that the requester can map the response to the request already. Mm -hmm. um, and if the protocol necessarily mean, um, if the protocol mandates that there is a, a, a nonce value in the response, the server might take a very, very short nonce value even. Um, because it can be sure that it's 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 using sequence numbers. So this is kind of this there is no need to um, transport large amounts of entropy um, in the response because there's a signature on the response. And there is a a, a, um, a signature in the response and or a counter for the and and a, and a sequence number counter. So um, the, 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 the request hash should not be transported in the response. Right, and I believe that's what the draft says too, that typically, uh, if it's a should, I believe, it says that the request hash option should be uh, omitted from the response. Yeah. Um, but I guess the question is, don't you, regardless of that, have to, um, when you're protecting that response, somehow, somehow involve the request hash value yeah, uh, yeah the, the request hash value is involved, but that is one of the reasons I'm 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 suggesting to use kudos here because by the time mm -hmm. um, that request hits the server, the server uh, creates a key state in into which the request hash is processed as part of a nonce. Um, so it is um, mm -hmm. so that the response already works only if the request if it's processed for the right request hash. Uh, I, I see. Um, I guess what we were discussing was that, um, yeah, basically, if you put the value in the core payload, regardless if you like, if you don't actually include it in the in the response. I mean, um, when you're protecting the response, if you're not including the request hash value at all, is that? Uh, I understand you're you're involving it when. I'm protecting the request, but don't you need to also involve it somehow in the protection of the response? Or you were trying to explain it, that it's somehow well, it, it does update the kudos, uh, the kudos key material. So um, therefore, it oh. is it is part already of the of the protected response. I see what you're saying. So we weren't thinking about it like that. We were thinking. So you're actually saying that this will actually trigger like an actual execution of kudos. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I see. So it's not just about transferring the nonce. Yeah. 
uh, or request hash values actually no, it's, on it's really running about, it's really about running kudos and the server in a sense um would have uh so the, the server has basically two options here the server can keep track of the say um short response nonce values that it could use for the um for the deterministic requests and keep the sequence number for each individual deterministic request or otherwise just make sure that it is using the sequence numbers in the deterministic fashion uh, in a in, in a regularly ordered fashion or it could come up with a random response nonce and thus um basically do what you can do after kudos that is restart the sequence numbers i think it is preferable for the server to um to use actual incremental sequence numbers because this allows the client to then reorder the responses, which is an important property of cacheable loss core. Um, and from that would follow that the server would not even input or can, the server would input a nonce, but yeah. the nonce the server inputs would be determinist would be just as deterministic as the request. But unlike the nonce in the request, it can be very short. So like as you've shown you can't have a zero length um input material so it would be one length it would be one long and the server would pick one and stick with that um i see so but how would this work considering that this is a a cached um like mm -hmm. um do you have all these necessary properties in terms of, of freshness and such if you actually well freshness the, the um cacheable also kind of if it's supposed to be cacheable it can't provi provide freshness and that is a kind of that is a fundamental yeah. trade-off that is done when doing cacheable also cool. so the when the client sends the request it cannot know whether the response that it gets might not have been created be um, before the request was sent it's kind of basic caching no, I see what the only saying. thing that the, that the client can do is it can order the responses by using the sequence numbers. And it knows that if there was ever a rekeying in the, on the group side, mm -hmm. it knows that the response is fresh, is, is fresh relative to the last rekeying because that is, part, that is where the key material came from. Okay, so I haven't thought about this, but basically in cacheable score, it's you're, you're actually using group or score, right? So how would this, yes. I mean, wouldn't it be um, but kudos, is described, you know, kudos is described for group of score as well. So there I would basically just rely that it's working for group of score. Uh, well, and it's currently only for vanilla of score uh, in the, the draft, although we have thought about similar uh, like solutions for group of score. But I think the tricky thing is if you rekey peer to peer like that, don't you become out of sync with the overall group key material? Uh, the thing is, you don't you don't re -key, you don't really rekey pair to pair. It's more like <clears throat> so. This would be in non perfect perfect non PFS mode. Mm -hmm. So when you have the 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 groups the the group state, that is kind of the pairwise state between the deterministic client and the and the, and the server. Um, each of those kudos executions that are triggered with a deterministic request spin off a new security context for each of those um, deterministic responses. Um, but because we are not in PFS mode, mm -hmm. um, those don't overwrite each other, but those live independently and basically can, so, and, and as long as the server takes care to not, uh, to not forget things, um, or just has its monotonous, it's, it's always increasing sequence numbers, uh, yeah. The server doesn't even need to persist those individual ones, but it can just see, okay, uh, there's a new request coming in here. It is doing kudos with this and this hash. Okay, I'll pick, I'll, basically I'll create a new of those child contexts. And because I don't know whether I have created this child context before or not, I'm taking the next sequence number in my general sample sequence number, so I don't have to tr keep track of all of those. Um, and then it's a kind of ephemeral, it's a kind of an ephemeral kudos run. So that kudos run is good for exactly that request response pair. Okay, and then you revert back but, to um, the... Yeah. Given that the requests are all deterministic, um, they still line up uh, cryptographically. Okay, so it's really like ephemeral. Like then when this kudos execution yeah. combined deterministic request and kudos execution is done, you, well, you revert back to using the general group. Yeah, you, you, you don't kind of you, you're waiting for another request to come in that has its own 
kudos stay thing, but that again is, is starting from the non PFS mode. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry to jump in. Why, why thing, one thing I don't understand is um, kudos as it is designed now um, protects the first message with a temporary context. Uh, derived from well the nouns involved in the message and the current uh, context between those two exact yes. years uh, an old-fashioned pairwise or score context so group of score is not really involved um, in that T to put it simple group of score has nothing to do with kudos <laughs> right now i think i remember that there was some well in the draft there's uh, nothing about group of score uh, we have had other side discussions at in the past about how could this be applied to group or score to update the pairwise keys but exactly. draft itself is only about OS score not group or score at all exactly christian i think what you're remembering okay. is an, an idea we quickly uh, talked about and not in detail in the past about um a small uh, fork of kudos uh, yes in the interest of upgrading uh, pairwise keys of group or score between two exact group members but there's nothing like that around yet. Uh, it's not part of Kudos at all. Um, to give a bit more detail on the second half of, of this slide, um, in cacheable Oscar as it is today using um, group of score, um, even in the response, it's important to um, integrity protected hash value somehow uh, to rebuild the sort of secure binding between request and response that would be otherwise broken irrespective of having the option put on the wire or not. And it works now because you're treating that, that option as class I, irrespective of its addition or not. And well, that's protected uh, naturally through the external AD. And this slide says that uh, even if, um, as you propose, um, the hash value would be put as a kudos nouns in the Oscar option, you still work, luckily, uh, because group of score, um, through the external AD also protects the OSCOR option uh, of the present message. So that point means that, yeah, you still work just in a different way. Uh, the payload would not work because in that but, case you can protect it anymore. But but doesn't the request, non, the, the nonce that is sent in the request when using kudos in full with some hand waving for the group part, um, it, it does update the key material. And if the key material is updated, um, that input is protected as part of the authentic of, of the AED tag. Well, for the request, uh, no, no it's the response. Both, I, I think, think I, I mean, I, I think your point, Christian, is that you, we, you were thinking about like actually truly running kudos. Yes, yes, our, yes. <laughs> our mode of thinking was that you're using the field merely for transporting the hash. You're not actually executing kudos by means of the deterministic request as a trigger yeah, yeah I'm, I'm i'm really thinking of this as as running kudos because that's the whole kind of to me that's the whole point of, of offloading those things because i'm deterministic oscor is now reaching into depths of oscor which i would prefer not to reach into and kudos not only gives me the field to send the data in but also the mechanism of how that data is processed into 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 updated key material so that i so that the, the deterministic OSCore draft doesn't have to reach that far down into OSCore. But just alter how to basically guide the decision steps in using deterministic OSCore that allow uh, in, in use guide the decisions in, in in kudos to make things deterministic. Yeah, and I think then one complication we definitely have is that the way kudos is defined now is uh, exclusively for exclusively for oscore and not group oscore and yes um it's not yeah it's not entirely clear to me how it okay. can work with group oscore like you said you can have this kind of chain or ephemeral context but i wonder if you wouldn't need to also update the some part of how the new context is derived and, and other things um yeah, this this clearly needs needs a bit more more thinking on my part. Yeah. Yeah, and, and other so. than this uh, straight separation um, in cacheable Oscar as it is now, you have the the request protected with something special at the end of the day derived from the group material, 
And fortunately, in the request, the hash contributes to the derivation of the key material specifically yeah. used for the request, and then you integrity protect it. In the response instead, um, the key material to use is not newly derived, it's just the sender key of the server per group of score. Yep, but that <laughs> then needs this weird construct of having the invisible class I option. And if yes. we use, if, if we manage to use kudos here, we would just feed that that thing into the key material and then not need any any shenanigans about how this is sent and not sent and still part of the authentication and yeah. I think it would be way cleaner to do it that way. But the, the whole point is transporting that value, say in the Oscar option at the end of the day, it, why does Kudo specifically has to be involved no, in the, a special... the, point, the, the point is not the point is not just transporting it. The point is um, transporting it and getting the request response binding um, mm. by means of that value finding its way into the into the OSCO key material. That is oh. um, so. So, like, if if it were just about transporting it, yeah, then it could or can it can be an option. It can be another field in the OSCO. Um, but Kudos has all the parts that are needed to make to make this secure without without the application of of the deterministic OSCO reaching that that far down that far down into OSCO. That, that binding would work um, anyway here, right? Because the OSCO option is protected. So the moment you yeah, place so something in, in there. The in, in the request, yes, but in the response, if we don't want to send it explicitly, it's not. Oh, uh, that, right, that, that's the mm. problem. You cannot and, elide it anymore. <laughs> yeah, and, right. we, and, and, and and we need it elided because the one, yes, one agree. case of the deterministic <laughs> OSCOR is to have multicast notifications and we don't want to send stuff around there. Uh, I, I agree. So you are, you are basically getting to the point of a the next slide, if I remember correctly, on the performance. So, so, so far, so good was about, yeah, uh, making a sanity check of what is protected and how. Uh, but, but then we, we really get to the point you've just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And so, but I think it's, it's um, so of course, this presentation is based on, we didn't consider that you were actually executing kudos. Uh, possibly we we should then rethink it based on that scenario if that is somehow possible like you're saying to take advantage of the fact that Kudo is changing the keys um, but I think I can go to the next slide because that's relevant also for, for what we have discussed so um, let me just check I wasn't correct yes so this is the next slide um, and then the question becomes uh, basically um, yeah, like we, we concluded, placing it in those corruption would work uh, technically. Um, but is it a convenient solution for kudos? And well, what we concluded is that kudos, we don't really think that kudos needs, uh, kudos itself needs longer nonsense than yeah. 16 bytes. Um, because, well, it's already supporting 16 bytes. And if you have longer ones, you really need a, a very good source of entropy uh, on the devices. And um another let's say um complication is that in cache below score it would become a bit more difficult um parsing messages in the sense that um these messages would basically be marked in those corruption as if they were uh, kudos messages uh, but not actually being about the key update but now i understand your point christian that this would in fact be about the key update according to your idea yeah. um but nonetheless the message processing would be a bit more complicated because you, it's not enough to check um that uh, the the bit in those corruption is set so this is about kudos you also have to check the the request kid to see that this is them that it's the sender id of the deterministic client and as a next point we concluded as was just discussed that if you place the request hash option um, and you place that value in the OS core option instead, you are not able to elide it from the response as is normally the case in cache of a loss core. Um, and that results in larger uh, response sizes. So based on this and 
our current understanding of the idea you proposed, we we kind of concluded that it would be better to keep the the current design in both documents, uh, as the Kudos doesn't really need longer nonsense, and it seems that it would, in the case of cache overall score, uh, result in more complicated message processing and increased communication overhead. But again, this is based on that understanding that it's not actually about running kudos. And well, feel free to jump in if you have. Uh, let me just take this last slide uh, about other general points. So, um, as far as the limits document, which has been split out from kudos, uh, a new version was submitted, version two, just to revamp it and keep it from uh, expiration. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're most waiting for um, updates to the C4G AAD limits document. And we also heard uh, that uh, John Matson may be um, going to uh, give some feedback either directly to the limits document or possibly otherwise into um, C4G. As far as the ID update procedure, well, that was discussed in ITF 118 and decided to split it out into a new document. Uh, so we will do that and submit before the next um, cutoff date. Uh, as far as three specific open points that were discussed and um, raised during ITF 118, where we also um, got some feedback, is the uh, enabling of a more flexible kudos message flow. So we don't have to have this rigid request response flow. So it's not necessary that you have to have a request and a response. Why can't you run kudos with, for instance, a request from uh, one peer to the other, and then the next kudos message is yet another request uh, from that other peer to the first peer. So it doesn't have to be so rigid that it's only about requests and responses always. And Christian, this was also based on um, one of your scenarios based on the resource directory. So we said that this seemed reasonable and good to kind of not put ourselves in such a rigid structure. Uh, so we will go ahead with that. We also discussed um, allowing kudos messages to just be regular application messages. There's no need that kudos messages can only be sent to this well-known kudos resource. It could just as well be a, a client that's actually wanting to retrieve uh, a resource on the server and it's not only doing that with the request, but the request itself is also a kudos message. And then finally, we discussed this usage of non-random nonsense in kudos where um, this can be allowed, but limited to capable devices while we still um, recommend the usage of random nonsense. And as far as implementation, we're actually starting up now an implementation of kudos both in Java and also in C with the aim of running it on some uh, actual constrained devices. Yeah, so that was the presentation. The other things were um, backup slides. But um, yeah, I think we had a good discussion. And uh, again, I think the, the complication would be that if you want deterministic request, the deterministic request to actually trigger a kudos execution. Um, yeah, the way we have kudos defined now, it's it's completely only for all score and not for group of score at all. Yeah, so I, th I think if 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 mm. we want to make any progress here, I will have to mm. look into how kudos basically pick pick up on that thread about kudos running in running for groups, and then see where that gets us and whether that whether that when basically done straightforward has all the required properties for the deterministic OS core to just magically work. Because that's what in the end I, I'm, I'm hoping for. So I, I, my, my hope here is that um, when kudos for groups is defined in a way that is not too absurd, um, that then the deterministic OS core can just become can can not say anything about cryptography at all, basically, but just say that you're building this. Basically, you're using this nonce, and it's okay to use this nonce here, and then everything else falls falls into place. And it probably needs to say a few things about like you have to verify that this cache matches up, yada. But mm -hmm. um, 
that's about it. that should that should be about it and no 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 digging deep in 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 Oscar security context but that only works if um that, that only works if um group if kudos for groups works well and on the point of of where to transport it um yeah i i have a hunch that if if it turns if if long nonces would really be complicated to add in here um then it might even be an option to have that basically that request hash option act as something that overrides the kind of that interacts with the Oscar option in providing the actual long nonce that is longer than could be expressed something like that to still um, fall into that path of using kudos even though kudos on its own cannot express that long length that long nonce mm, I, I think I see you point there it, it would be yeah. like like the Oscar option is very compact and it can express some things and there is another option another actual co-op option so we are yeah. not getting too far into this business of having an option that has an internal structure that has some bits that because that that's the, that is one of the reasons I brought up the topic of of doing it in the payload because I'm seeing that there's this option and I have to make sure that the um, that the bits there are staying usable in the sense that you can really can process the whole message just from seeing those bits and using another group of bits is already something um, to, to indicate a length is already something that I'm yeah kind of not too happy with I mean it's it's been used that way so it's kind of it's fine but then playing some field extension tricks in there that have to be supported by all implementations because otherwise they can't even ignore that field if they know that they could ignore it mm -hmm. um, is is stretching it a lot. So maybe, yeah, may, maybe maybe going with a dedicated option or something request um, deterministic or score specific might really be a good path forward here, um, even though it would still use the full kudos mechanism because otherwise the exercise is moved. Right. So basically. In terms of kudos, yeah, there's then wouldn't be any need to support longer nonces. However, if there, when this group kudos is actually uh, defined and put into a draft, that could possibly be taken advantage of to simplify some aspects of cache below score and maybe removing this trick of handling the request hash option as class I and instead relying on the the group kudos. Uh, key renewal to to um, achieve similar properties and um, then whether if you're using a specific option you can say that in the context of like group kudos combined with cacheable loss score that the value from that option is supposed to be taken and used in group kudos as some kind of input yeah okay um and there's Karsten in the queue yeah yeah, I just wanted to point out that nominally we are still using CBOR here. So um, I think the the number of uh, special hacks for, for conveying structure uh, should be reined in a little bit. Um, so um, yes, we, we are in the co-op context. So we, we, we kind of have the, the co-op uh, functionality for expressing length available as well. Uh, now that actually comes in in a combination with, with an option number. So usually it's the the upper bits that carry that length information. Um, I'm, I'm just seeing a slide down this this path where where we invent a lot of uh, binary syntax uh, which will give us a lot of CVEs at some point in time because people aren't doing the parsing right. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons I was advocating against doing any any of the, those magical things here. It's, we, we need the bit fields because that worked, that was what made us, that was what allowed OSCore to be as compact as it is. And we can't do bit fields with Seabor but mixing in Seabor or picking up co-op option structure inside that option that already has its bespoke binary thing, uh, I think we should, 
I think ideally we should do neither. And uh, right, because uh, basically right, because now, yeah, like so there was corruption today. It doesn't have any CVR encoded stuff at all. So even if we go with this custom non-size encoding or we go with putting in CBOR, it would still be a complication of the, like Christian said, the OSCOR option already has its own custom structure and, and none of the elements are, are CBOR encoded. So probably the easiest is to do neither, like neither include uh, any CBOR encoded stuff or in include this um, bit uh, signaling thing. Uh, so, I mean, if you don't need longer answers, we don't have to do either, right? But you're yeah, I, I also don't want to, to blow up this stuff so it's no longer useful. Um, but uh, I, I think we, we just have to to have have to be wary and, and have a good reason for doing things like this uh, before we do that. I agree, definitely. Because this would, for sure, I mean, it would uh, complicate the parsing of the those corruption. Uh, Definitely. So the, yeah, uh, the, the simpler way then would be to just stick with our uh, uh, current encoding, I would say, that would support 16-byte uh, nonsense. So um, the, the OSCore option, if I remember implementing it correctly, which has been some time, um, is in a sense a shorthand of some uh, components of, um, of a cozy structure. Right. Um, <laughs> It's if, taken and built from there. Yeah. If too many of the things we are adding here become non, not just set bits, um, but also type length values. I mean, like we, we this is like the, the we, we had we had the the first the first um, length the limited thing we had in there was the um, was the nonce. Uh, sorry, was the sequence number. Yeah, uh, and then we have the sender ID, which is automatically length delimited. Um, the con ID context. It might well be worth considering if, for things that are not, uh, for, for it, that when we are adding more things with a length, even such as the nonces we have here, whether it might make sense to have another maybe co-op option that expresses those things that are not as sensitive to length as OSCO, as Qu OSCO was, um, to, to move them into an into another field that also had in oh, sorry another um, option that basically gets unioned with the OSCO option but is used for things that are more regularly CBOR encoded. So say, um, See if we were talking about this as a nonce, and I, I hope mm -hmm. that it has some equivalent value in 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 the cozy context. Then that could be one byte indicating the key, and then one byte indicating the length, and then the value. Uh, and comparing that to the current lengths we have, that might add a byte or so, probably two bytes because we'll have to add another option. But it takes something away from this option again. So. Um, Maybe right. maybe that's a, that's a path to look into in parallel, independent of of the length topic. So your path would basically be like in a, in a sense like you could say, well, the Oscar option could stay as it was in the Oscar RFC, but then we introduce like a new co-op option that is like Oscar extended or something, where we place, yeah. for instance, the the two nonces and but in that case encoded with Cbor. Yeah, if um, it, it's just it's just a, a rough idea from seeing that there might be reasons to do Cbor in there, and if we were if we are ever tempted to do that, the um the, the dedicated option that uses like uncompressed Cbor um might become a good thing. Yeah, that's another feature, and in, if that had been the case, of course, then enabling these longer answers would have been. Uh, trivial or a lot simpler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, that that's also an interesting path. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's about it. What I had, um, if no one has 
for the. I have one more question yeah. for Christian, mostly for my um, understanding. Um, thinking of the current design of cashable score, um, understand with the hope to somehow merge things together. Did you see any particular reason for basically get rid of the current request hash option? Yeah, so the, the particular reason is that I'm reaching down into the into the OSCore key handling stuff. And that is a um, hard to maintain from an implementation point of view, because it's just another special case in the or already special case heavy um, part of deciding which key to use and, and whether uh, an OSCore option, uh, whether a part of the OSCore option influences the whole processing regime. And also from the security point of view, because if kudos gets kind of, if we're building on kudos and just stating that you using a deterministic nonce is okay under these and those circumstances, that is easier to review from a security point of view than reviewing that we are now creating a new security context with, uh, with, with this and that input material. Okay. Uh... Yeah, as Ricard mentioned before, in our thoughts, in our analysis, uh, we didn't really see a cashable Oscar and kudos merged. We, we were more rethinking cashable Oscar um, using the extended Oscar option, like kudos does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, because for now, kudos is streamlined for Oscar. Indeed. So we we're thinking about this as like a transportation uh, yeah. problem. Where do you transport the hash? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't express this more clearly. But it, it would no, actually it work, uh, honestly. It's just that then you end up with the penalty of um, overhead that you, can, you can't uh, really bypass because, uh, as we said, you cannot really elide the score option altogether transporting the hash. Yeah, but it's, it's like on, on the response, like in kudos, in kudos, it wouldn't be part of the response. So that, I think that's fine. Right, so then you're saying if it was this group kudos, then because it would be taken as input to the key derivation, you wouldn't it would be, it would be integrity protected because of that. You wouldn't have to actually include it if this was about run really running a group kudos yeah. variant. Yeah. yeah. No, okay, but I think it was a good discussion. I understand the the um, the idea uh, better now. Yeah. So understood, Christian. You you go through kudos again, uh, um, yeah, to double check if it matches and yes. if it can be developed to the direction you hope for. Okay. Yes. So Thank again, you. feel free to comment on that issue you already opened, or we can go via mail, or if we meet at some point. So let's discuss it further. Okay. Thanks for. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Ricard, and all for the discussion. And just jumping back to the top of the notes and the agenda, actually, I had to add one line because while we were discussing, uh, the mail was sent. So renewed congratulations for <laughs> now approved for publication, uh, course document. That was fast. OK, which brings us to the AUB. And there's a nice note from Christian. Yeah, um, I, I just want to take the, this context to announce that um, the Rust implementations of Cbor, uh, sorry, of Coop, um, are getting a big round of updates. So um, it's not quite where I want it to be on the long run, but I think it should now also manage to give a good interface for requests, not only for uh, for for the client, not only for the server side. So if you're interested in Coop APIs, have a look. Uh, Thank you. Your audio just cut off uh, all of a sudden. Uh, but I, I think we got the point. Do you have any specific uh, pointer? Uh, um, to, to basically, the... once I'm done with once I'm done with this, I'll update one of the readmes to illustrate what are the components because there is really an interaction of um, six or eight uh, library crates, which all try to be minimal on their own. Um, so there is once I have that graph that is part of this big update, um, I'll, I'll send that to the core list and, and sure. that would be a better Please answer. Do. <laughs> Please do. Thank you. OK, so we are at the end of the agenda and all the notes.
Is there any other point you want to mention or discuss today? Carson. Oh, sorry, I just miss, mispressed this button, then, but then I can say. <laughs> uh, we have reached the end of our allotted uh, slot. Uh, I think. No, not really. We, oh, we, we have, have another half hour. Oh, right, but right, but right, uh, right. no one would complain, uh, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> So let me just say thank you. This this was a, a good discussion. I'm not sure I understood uh, all of it, uh, but it certainly pointed me to having to reread some of these documents. Sure. Okay. Uh, thanks, everyone. And thanks a lot, Christian, for taking notes. And talk to you in two weeks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.